Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to go through a couple very basic things you can do with Raycast that don't get talked about enough in videos like this because people like to go hard on Raycast. People like to talk about all the nerdy, elaborate things you can do with it, but let's just stick to the basics and let me show you why Raycast might be a good alternative to something like Alfred or Apple's built-in Spotlight. Okay, so first up, we're going to bring it up with a keyboard shortcut. I have it set up for Option Spacebar. Uh, that's just what I've always used for my launchers. Um, and then you're going to see it shows the last, like, five, not the last five, the most common apps that I'm going to launch um, right now. And those are actually pretty darn close. Um, but some people don't like this. I think it's too busy. So if you go into the settings from here, um, you can see this is actually where I set up my keyboard shortcut to whatever I want. Um, but there's a window mode. You can set it to compact. So now when I launch it, um, I could just do like App Store, cool, launch it again. And now it's much more like Alfred or any of those other apps that are just much more minimal um, by default. So that's one thing you can do to make it a little cleaner. This is actually Matt from the edit jumping in for one quick bonus one. There's also one I forgot. It's called Confetti. And all it does is throw confetti on your screen, which if you're giving a presentation is a great way to close things out. Now, the other thing, the main thing you're probably going to be doing with this is launching apps. And you already saw me do that. Um, I can launch the App Store. I can launch... Um, what else? Uh, Boop is a cool app uh, that'll launch nice and easy. Um, you can launch any app on your computer and it's just going to work. So that's exactly how it works with everything else. Uh, it also starts to like remember if you type in B and happen to launch the same app that starts with B more often, it's going to suggest that first. So it does all the things that Alfred and Spotlight do to try to make the app launching nice and easy. Another thing it has really nice out of the box is a good uninstall experience. So not Raycast itself, although you can uninstall Raycast. Um, if I go to like my applications folder and I want to uh, delete AccuFlow, for example, I can drag this app icon to the trash, but it's going to leave behind a bunch of library files and a bunch of just cruft that I don't want. So what do I do? Um, I can pull it up here. And then when you have anything selected in Raycast, you can hit Command K to bring up a submenu of what you want to do. And so you can open the app, you can show it in the Finder, show info in the Finder, all these things. But all the way at the bottom, there's Uninstall Application. And if I select that, here's all the apps, or sorry, all the files on my computer that are associated with AccuFlow. And if I just hit this, it will go ahead and uninstall everything. It's gone. It's going to ask me for my password. And it's uninstalled the app. Right, And so it's gone from my applications folder, um, and then we could dig into the details, but it does remove those other files as well, which just is a cleaner way to uninstall apps on the Mac. Another thing you can do is launch shortcuts. Uh, so if I bring up the shortcuts app here, uh, you can see I have one called Get Site Analytics, and this just shows me how many people have visited my blog today. Right, So I can go ahead, um, I should actually go back to shortcuts. Uh, it's called Get Site Analytics. That's the shortcut. So if I do Get Site it auto completes to get site analytics. It has access to my shortcuts and I hit enter. And this should give me a notification in a second that says, hey, you're, you've had a total of 337 visitors today. Um, and that's the shortcut, right? I can run it again. Um, there we go. And then in a second, there we go, 337 visitors. Uh, so it's able to run shortcuts for you uh, just like that without uh, launching the shortcuts app, without using the menu or anything, just right from your app launcher. Here's another cool one. Um, what is the time in NYC, right? So it's currently uh, 2.42 p.m. in New York City. Uh, it's currently 1.42 p.m. where I am in the central time, so that makes sense. Um, you can also do like plus six hours. Uh, so in six hours, it'll be 8.42 p.m. in uh, New York City. Um, and you can do like, right? So we could do like Sydney. Uh, time in, oops, typo, in Sydney. Uh, there we go. So it's actually tomorrow at 5.42 a.m. in Sydney right now. Um, so just being able to look up times in different places and to do math on it, I think is pretty rad. Now, if you use a Mac and do not use a clipboard manager, I cannot recommend it enough. I, I, I don't understand how I got by for decades without using one. I started using one a few years ago. Changed my life. I use PaySpot. But if you don't want to pay for another app, you can use Raycast to do that. Um, when I bring up Raycast and search for clipboard history, uh, there's this right here. And I can go through things that I've previously copied to my clipboard, whether they be text or images, and they'll show up here. And it shows like link previews. It shows where you got them from, um, right? All that's here. And then you can also do things to them. Um, like this is all pretty excellent. Uh, you can remove them from your <laughs> history as well if you don't want them there for some reason. Um, but yeah, it basically just gives you access to things you've previously copied, so you don't lose them if you like copied something else, and now you're like, oh shoot, I have to go back to that thing. It's built into Raycast. You can also set up a system-wide keyboard shortcut to bring this up at any point without having to like bring it up and then type clipboard history, hit enter, and go to it. You can just bring up this view. Um, but yeah, really awesome that's built into Raycast as well. 
Okay, and finally, there is some text expansion built into Raycast as well. They're called snippets. So if you search for snip, snippets, whatever, uh, you can create a snippet, search your snippets, or import snippets. Uh, and I actually haven't done an import, um, but it looks like you can import them with JSON format uh, if you have them somewhere else. Haven't done in that, um, but we're just going to show you how to create a snippet. Uh, so we're going to call this my email. Uh, we're going to make it matt at abettercomputer.com, which is not my email address, so don't get any crazy ideas, but is a thing. And let's just say if I type three E's in a row, um, I wanted to type that email address out because it's just a thing I need to give out. Um, let's go ahead and create the snippet. Cool. And now let's just open up a text app. This is Boop. Um, and I'm going to just say like, uh, please email me at, and then E. -E. There we go. Matt at a better computer.com. And boom, that's there. It's easy to do. Um, again, that is E. -E. There it is. And so you can do this for a million things. I have tons of these set up. Um, I personally use Keyboard Maestro to do this. But again, if you don't want to buy another app, if you want to have it all kind of bundled into uh, your app launcher, into Raycast, uh, you can totally do that. And again, all of the stuff I showed today is completely built into the app when you first install it. So there's nothing extra to set up. Uh, the first time you run the shortcuts one, it's going to prompt you to um, have access to your shortcuts so we can actually search them and find them. But as long as you're okay with that, and you presumably you are because you wanted to launch them, um, you can do that really, really easily. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.